Hello folks. Welcome to my den. Yes. I'm out in the kiln shed and it is snow outside. I'm in my snow boots. Got my coat on. It, the wind is out there and it's, it's about freezing or below freezing. I don't know what the temperature is but it's like... Anyway, I'm here. Yeah, might as well just show you what I'm up to. I am in the process of um, just beginning a pack of uh, a bisque. As you can see, I've just got those tankards down the bottom there, and um, I've got my plastic over the edge here, over the where I lean over, you know, where I so I don't disrupt the um, the ceramic fibers that are there. So I'm just. Uh, yeah, I'm just scanning around, having a look to see what we could put in there. I need, um, let's see it. That's the height that we want on the bottom. I was hoping uh, to have been able to get a smaller tankard on top of a larger one yeah there's a ways right you could if I had packing pieces but I don't really have any packing you know little pieces of broken uh, refractory tile I could make it a bit higher this prop but I don't so that isn't gonna work um, yeah so I'm just looking around maybe Oh, I've got some tea bowls over there, haven't I? Uh, tea bowls have their uses, don't they? So why don't we... Would a tea bowl fit on there and still... Yeah. yeah I've got a bit extra... bit extra height there on the prop. You see, that's fine. Um, that'll work very nicely. So we'll take some of those tea bowls. And um, uh, get that one down there. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, this little thing is a a useful thing. I don't, I I haven't actually got my over there beyond the tripod. I've got a I got a wood burning stove, and I got some pipes over there, which I'm I'm gonna plumb that in but I haven't done it yet have not done it yet but okay uh, another tea bowl that one can go there da, 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 da. yeah see if I can grab two at a time One there. You have to be a bit careful with bisque, don't you? Because it's fragile. And um, you know, when you're leaning over into into a kiln, it's very easy to sort of kind of knock things, isn't it? And inadvertently, kilns always seem to be rather delicate affairs, don't they? Very oop, prone to... Da, 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 and that'll go there. So I got a good... I got a good almost inch of clearance there. So that's good. <sighs> yeah, I got some little, little pictures up here. Uh, as well, but they actually are taller than you. Oops, look what's happening. I knocked that, you see. See what I've done? I knocked that. Oops, uh, something has dropped down there. The matter it can stay. I've actually got some, um, some refractory refractory cement that I made up. Unfortunately, I've got to soak this in boiling water, it's frozen. 
I, what I should do is of course um, before we close the lid and everything I should I should just put a bit of that cement around here so that it yeah we don't want it to fall out during the firing do we? Oh what's this? Oh somebody's Hello? Okay. La 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 la. Dee, 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 dee. So. Yeah, I can go there. That one can go there. You could really get quite a lot in, you know, in a bisque. If you're just be a little bit respectful, I think, anyway, of the flame pathways, you know. If you have it too, too dense and too solid, I don't know actually what it's like with a, with an electric kiln, it might be, it might be a different ball game, I don't know. But with a gas kiln, um, be respectful of the. I've got to make sure. Somebody wrote to me actually. And I haven't responded to him yet. John out there, John Blackwood, I think he called. Well, maybe I did respond to you. Yes, I did. I did. Yes, I thank thank you all for comments. Um, you know we. Uh, the other day I was. A little bit perplexed, wasn't I, with that bloating? I think I figured out what it is. Um, actually, John did help me there, so thank you, John. I know I've already thanked you, but I appreciate the feedback, you know. There's always so much to learn, isn't there? Um, yeah, I think I figured it out, and that is, I was. I was, I was start, I've been starting, here I'll just put this back on the cam, on the tripod because I bet you're all dizzy aren't you, with me moving around. Um, I think what it was, the, 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 the burners are firing fine, the kiln is is great the size of it even though I've added an extra layer of bricks you know it's made the kiln a little bit deeper um, but uh, it's firing fine I think though what I've been doing is I've been starting the the reduction a little bit on the early side and I'm gonna let it get a bit hotter let it get a bit hotter and part of my problem is you see I've never, <laughs> now you're going to laugh, <laughs> you know what, I've never had a pyrometer in my life. I've never had a pyrometer in my life, so, and it's never seemingly had been a problem, but you know, I, I'm thinking, come on Simon, get yourself a pyrometer, you know. So that's what I'm going to do. By the way, if anybody's got any recommendations for a pyrometer, please please let me know. I need it for cone 10 and um, it's partly laziness I think, I just haven't bothered with one, I just I just have one cone in a kiln and I just use that, you know, go by that. And I sort of like get to know the flame and how it, how it appears, you know, on the top of the kiln. But it actually would be a good idea I think to have a pyrometer. So I am going to get one. So if anybody's, maybe somebody out there has got a second hand one, <laughs> who wants to sell me? I don't mind, it hasn't got to be new, it's just as long as it works. Um, and I'm going to need a pyro couple to go with it. But yeah, uh, what I was saying was I think I've been starting the reduction too soon so that the carbonaceous matter which combines with oxygen and exits the kiln through the chimney here I've not been burning it out, you see, properly. So that's what we're going to do. 
That is the plan. In fact, another thing I've, do, I've done is I've managed to uh, a local a local potter here, a guy actually called Roger Pollock. He is a, a geologist and a potter. He has a salt kiln, and I've been over to his. And we've done some videos over there. You all remember. Anyway, he he had a an electric kiln that he wanted to sell. So uh, I'm buying that from him, and we're going to install the electric kiln in the other part of the main workshop. So at least we'll be able to make everything and bisque fire it over there and then I'll bring it over here, you know, when it's finished and when it's glazed. So I won't have all this sort of traipsing to and fro with, with boards of pots in six inches of snow, etc. Not ideal. <laughs> yes. Okay, well that's it folks. It's just a, it's a quick clip just to... So you can see what I'm doing. I've got to get this kiln fired. And uh, then I have to quickly repack it for a, a glaze firing after that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to carry on, finish off this bottom shelf here, put a put a shelf in, and and then fill the the, the rest of the kiln. I usually, you know, when I'm doing a bisque, I only just have like one shelf, sort of somewhere in the middle, and then pack up to that and then pack on top of it and of course with the, with bisque you can you can put your pots one on top of each other so you know it's um, no problem there with pots sticking together or anything like that so really one shelf is good the other thing is to bear in mind as I said the flame the flame aerodynamics of your kiln more shelves that you've got the, the less aerodynamic your kilns gonna be in other words the flames the gas the fuel that's burning and going through, uh, imparting its energy out into the kiln space to the pots, isn't going to be able to do that so readily if you've got more and more shelves. So I just keep your bisques, bisque firing to the minimal amount of shelves. At least that's what I do. Hey, <laughs> what next? Yes. <laughs> Visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. If you fancy a Skype session like we had in the last clip that I did with old Mike out there in Las Vegas, it worked out actually pretty well. If that's something that interests you, you'll find the details are there on the website. Okay? Hey, thanks a lot, folks, for joining us on this cold Friday afternoon. And keep practicing. I'll see you soon. Wait right for the next clip. Bye-bye.